So I'm here with Gareth Marlowe. Um, and Gareth, I was, I was listening to some people talk about sports leaders and I heard someone describe that the, the role of a coach was to bring the, the team up after a particular low or to mm-hmm. encourage people to uh, reevaluate their performance after like, kind of like getting to a high or doing particularly well. Do you have any mm-hmm. thoughts about that kind of thing and from a, from a leadership perspective? I think that's a great perspective. And I think that the, uh, the situation or the circumstances might change. So the, the notion of a low in terms of the, the end of a match defeat or the end of a season defeat uh, might be a little bit different in the business context. But nevertheless, what we're really talking about is, um, is what's, the, what's the emotional ebb and flow? Uh, and how do we manage mindset? from within that because I think what's what's been really interesting about the development of business coaching over the last 30 years is it has come out of sports coaching and the learnings from sports coaching and what it showed is just the importance of psychology and the connection between psychology and psychological state and performance um so you know that's not to say that that's all that you're doing in coaching and a lot of the time you might not even necessarily need to go near that but certainly if there have been a if there has been a setback um something has not quite worked out uh and you need to regroup uh and then sort of get everything back together refocus and get everybody re-energized and aligned and motivated to go in the right direction it's going to be a similar set of things that you're working through with that individual or with that team and i guess this might apply say after after you maybe put together a big bid and uh, perhaps if you you lose that bid um, then one of your jobs as the leader is perhaps in that situation to manage the energy of the team and bring them up and say don't worry we can like, the next one will will be there uh, I think it's uh, I, I think that's absolutely right um, and also just kind of changing the time frame so mm. you know Actually, we feel we all feel wretched because it feels like it's the end of the world because we've lost the we've we've lost out uh, in that bid or whatever it might be. Actually, a lot of the time the the competition is internal. So uh, yeah, we didn't get we didn't get approval for more people to come and join the team and for us to ramp this thing up. And the wounds that we're licking ourselves from, I wouldn't say it's kind of self-inflicted, but it's a consequence of an internal decision, not against not as a consequence of external competition. Um, but nevertheless, you know, one of the things that you're doing is, is you're taking a step back and you're saying, oh, look, you know, in the big story, this thing that has just happened is a footnote. You know, it's not chapter, it's not the final chapter. Uh, it's one of just one of, the, one of the challenges that we experience along the way. Um, and I think it also, particularly when you're in that scale-up context where you know, there isn't a, a normal, there isn't a steady state. Um, and and at the cold face, it feels like you get some setbacks. But actually, when you take a step back and you say, right, looking over the last two years, we've still doubled in size. We've still opened the second office. We're still, you know, so on and so forth. So actually, what this journey has looked like is sort of that. Yeah. But in the moment, we're looking at this and just going, okay, no, we've gone from there all the way back down to there. And that that's not the true reality, you know? Do you think there's anything to be said for, um, I don't know, limiting some of the enthusiasm, I don't know, trying to temper some of the excitement uh, in the face of what seems to be a, a large win? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I think that excessive response in any one direction tends to be not the most help- healthy thing. Um, so it's very important that you do recognize and celebrate the progress that you make. And yeah, that can be a huge amount of it. I mean, certainly way more powerful than giving somebody a bonus is yes. that real sense of, wow, we did it. You know, we achieved it. That's one of the most uh, powerful and intoxicating things that you do go and chase. Uh, but the risk is there that if everything is measured against, you know, if it doesn't reach that, then it's failure. That's not a helpful baseline because it won't always be like that far from it uh and indeed we're, if we are viewing something falling short from that kind of ideal as being failure 
then we're less likely to be learning from it, which is the really important thing. Um, so I think it's more a sense of um, trying to kind of ride the clutch really mm. between sort of putting your foot down on the enthusiasm and the energy and so on and so forth and just having that um well look, let's keep keep alert to the risks and yep. keep alert to the downside one so that a our hubris is not gonna just keep us ignoring something that's important that we need to, to be responding to but also you're putting on the table the possibility that things might not turn out the way that we are mm. hoping for and that's kind of okay that is part of the journey so yep. Yeah, I think, you know, having a having a glasses completely full or completely empty approach, um, neither of those is that helpful. Um, what you're really looking for is that thing in the middle. Like it's half full of really tasty lemonade. That's what we're, you know, <laughs> that's what we're trying to reach. Perfect. Well, I'll, thanks for that, Gareth. Uh, half full of tasty lemonade. I'll, I'll remember that quote forever. Thanks very much. Helpful. No worries. My pleasure.